Well, hello, welcome to Northern Utah, and welcome to the first episode of Will It Make It to Moab? Where I buy a particularly stupid vehicle and try and ride or drive it back to Moab. Um, I'm about a thousand miles away from Moab at the moment, off road, and so here I am at Right Deal Auto Sales, where normally they sell sensible vehicles, but due to a weird set of circumstances, they've ended up with the perfect vehicle for me. Ready to sit? Okay, it's to the right. <gasps> oh, that is amazing. <laughs> that would be fun. G yeah. Oh, Jesus. That... 1,000 miles off road. <laughs> is this smaller than you thought? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of, I mean, in... <laughs> Well, at least if it gets stuck, I should be able to get it out. So, just to make sure everyone is fully up to speed with how stupid this is, I'm here near Salt Lake City in northern Utah, and I need to get here to Moab in southern Utah. I've chosen this, oh no, sorry, this to do it in. I've already told the internet I'm going to do it, so I can't back out now. So now I'm here with no choice but to ride 1,000 miles back home off-road. So now I'm going to take it for a test drive to see exactly what I've let myself in for. <laughs> this is so like brilliantly bad. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Vibrations are nearly unbearable. It really doesn't turn it with power. Right, well now I've proved it's terrible in a car park, I should probably find out if it's terrible on the road as well. Yes. Yes, it's awful. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my top speed, which you reach almost immediately. <laughs> ah, there's a fourth gear. Fourth gear? Okay, it's only a three speed. And the tiniest touches on the steering wheel make you go, oh, left, oh, right, oh, saved it. Well, we can see how it handles a tiny curb and some gravel. Turns on the road. And it's got a solid rear axle, which means it doesn't really want to turn. And it doesn't quite have the power to get it sideways. So, yeah, tightest turning circle I'll show you is actually that. Okay, well, now I've established that it's a horrendous vehicle and not at all suitable for what I want to do. It's time to pay $3,000 for it, because I'm starting to think I was dropped on my head as a child. <laughs> I nearly rolled it! Uh. <laughs> I mean, I love it. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. I mean, like, terribly awesome, or awesomely terrible, I don't know which way around. Oh, did I mention under the bonnet is a bored out Honda 90 engine? <laughs> ah, it's like, it's, it's the most Chinese thing I've ever seen. And I have actually worked in China for two months. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. That's cool. Right, well, paid the work and then head back to Mama. Let's do it. So yes, the supporters of this channel are either going to be happy or incredibly upset that I spend your PayPal donations on this monstrosity. If you do have a complaint about this though, please write it in the comments section of another PayPal donation sent to ed.march at c90adventures.co.uk. Right, well that's all the paperwork done, so uh, <laughs> let's head off. Let's drive this. High quality vehicle. Two. Moab! Yeah! I'm a moron. No, 
Now, some of you might have noticed that I've got no gear and I'm about to head off. That's because I actually knew in advance that this thing was going to be dog slow and doing a thousand miles in it was going to drive me insane and it was going to rattle itself to pieces. So, nearby I found a very friendly engineer who has got loads of stuff waiting for me, all of my riding gear and camping gear and stuff, and we're going to uh, soup things up a bit. So there she is. Nice. Here. Here. <laughs> right. Out with eight horsepower. Right. Well, so let's see what Santa's got us, or technically wholesale cycle. Thank you so much, guys. This is a genuine Japanese Daytona 190 cc racing engine, which fits in a Honda 90, I'm sure at some point I'll be exploiting that stupid idea, but this puts out 25 horsepower and it is an absolute weapon. So uh, yeah, let's try and cram 25 horsepower in there, shall we? Let's do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Words of encouragement, I think it's about what there is. Come on. Have a there you go. There you go. <laughs> so you want to put this back bolt in first? So, status report, it's not a complete swap. Uh, annoyingly, the starter motor on this engine is underneath, which means it just clips the chassis rail there. If the starter motor was five mil smaller, it would have been a direct bolt in. So, uh, out comes the engine and out comes the welder. At least you're getting really good at putting the engine in now. <laughs> yeah. Right, back in for the final time, hopefully. The engine did actually go in. And because it's a bit longer than the old one, Nate set about carefully cutting out a little hole in the front of the grill for the larger air filter. And we both tried to avoid breathing in the horrendous fumes this mystery plastic was giving off. And the smell of burning recycled hamster bedding or whatever it is that the Chinese <laughs> melted down to, to, to make a body of this. So there we are, larger air filter installed. You can barely tell it's there. All that remained for a test drive was to fabricate a clutch pedal, because the old engine was semi-automatic and this new engine is manual. Instead, I avoided yeah. all fabrication work and just bolted the hand clutch vertically and operated it with my foot. Wow, that worked out real nice. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Of all of the things that I've like bodged, that went that, that, like that is like that's like perfect. Yeah. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. For example, we briefly ran out of parts. So we need two M6 washers, and rather than find them, this maniac is going to cut them out on the <laughs> laser cutter. <laughs> because why not? It's easier. All right. <laughs> now we have nine M6 washers. You're a maniac. <laughs> But I approve. <laughs> with those washers fitted, it was now time for the test drive with the three times power increase. The rule is you can't do anything without filming, because if it catches fire, then at least we have it on film. <laughs> right, so do you want to do okay. the filming? All right.
Ah, uh, yes. Along with the ultra-sensitive throttle, the clutch also had a razor-thin biting point. This new power plant was not exactly the most friendly thing I've ever driven. But pulling away was possible, and eventually I got to enjoy my test drive. But I didn't get to enjoy the full power today because of fueling issues. That would have to wait until tomorrow. The following day I diagnosed the fueling issue as an overly enthusiastic fuel pump, which I solved in a way that nobody cares about. The next problem to solve was that due to the regulator rectifier shipped with the engine being the wrong type, it put 65 volts through the 12 volt lighting system, blowing almost every light, which meant new lights off Amazon, which we combined with a luggage rack and license plate holder, which meant Nate had another chance to effortlessly over-engineer something. Nate 3D modelled it, added some lightning holes and sent it to the laser cutter. I decided Nate's hexagonal lightning holes were pretty and correct, but they weren't quite engineering perfection, so I forced a design change. Alright. Perfect. That's cool. <laughs> Nate continued to use hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment to make my penis rack, I mean luggage rack, and I set about fixing my lights. Long story short, I took apart the blown up ones, bought some 4 inch ones off Amazon and took them apart, and then mashed them together horrifically with indifference and gorilla tape. I then corrected the wiring issues in ways that people really don't care about, and ta-da! I've got lights again! Oh, we're getting there. Right, next on the list was fitting an oil cooler to stop the racing engine from melting. So, current plan is to take this transmission cooler and mount it behind the front grill, sort of there, so that it can cool down the engine. Because yesterday it got up to like 103 degrees and even if I was doing like 40 miles an hour, just riding around, um, it wasn't even cooling down, it was still getting hotter. So definitely need more cooling, and hopefully this does the job. Okay, engineering level is increasing. We're now at a hydraulics place to try and sort this absolute madness out. To stop my engine from overheating and to get rid of all of this Chinese-ness. And by Chinese-ness, I mean the included Chinese oil coolers are sand-casted which means they're brittle, could crack at any moment, throwing all my engine oil over the floor and destroying my engine, and they're still full of the sand from the casting process, which will enter my engine and destroy it that way. And if you thought the Japanese would be better, look at the oil lines on their racing engine. Because I'm thinking you could just almost, if you got a hold of that, you could just about pull it out. Yeah, that's... And it shouldn't spin like that. The oil cooler fitting doesn't even have barbs There's no barb on it. Madness. Right, well, uh, let's do it properly. Okay. Are you okay with being on camera? Sure. <laughs> let's do it properly. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Cut this fitting, braze that into there, and then this fitting. So this awesome dude braced me together some custom fittings, and now I had oil lines and an oil cooler I could trust. I took my lovely new parts back to the workshop, drilled some holes in the front grill, got the little transmission cooler clamp thingies ready, inserted the oil cooler, cut the lines to length, and bingo! I now had an engine that wouldn't melt. Probably. Time for a test drive. to have a go and try to pull away. If you don't stall it, I'll be annoyed. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Otherwise it means I suck. <laughs> it's a bitch, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I just gotta beat you to death. 
I, I expected to <laughs> rattle my kidneys out by the time I get halfway home, but... Yeah, that's, that's going to be a pretty rough ride. It's, it's an assault on the senses, isn't yeah. it? Brutal. And, and we're on pavement, it's not even bumpy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have I signed myself up for? Nice. <laughs> Test drive completed. I spent the rest of the day tinkering with little bits and bobs, but just before bed, I really had to get something off my chest. It's quite late at night and I really should be working and getting this finished, but I've got to take a moment to complain about probably the worst piece of Chinese engineering I've ever seen. Um, so, first off is it's a chain tensioner thingy to stop the chain from like slapping around inside too much, just making a bit of noise. Uh, this might not annoy you excessively, but if you're an engineer, uh, prepare to throw your monitor out the window. So there's this pin that goes in to there, right, and it's clamped, except they've threaded both sides, which means that the bolt that goes in can't squeeze it. That doesn't do any squeezing. Um, then they've uh, got this piece, <laughs> and then you've got this piece that bolts to this piece using this M8 bolt, but the hole inside is just absolutely massive. But on one side, they've almost put a shouldered recess, but it's not because that's a 45 degree chamfer. But you can't even use that chamfer because it has to bolt through that way. So that doesn't even make any sense. Then, then, this bolts to this, basically, using the bolts that go through here, right? Um, and the bolts that recess in, into that hole, but uh, they don't have a shoulder recess, they've countersunk them. So it's got a 45 degree countersink, but it's got a straight bolt, so it does and it, it's just, it's, 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 it's all crap. The following day was the final day of the build. It was just the remaining fiddly tasks like getting a throttle cable to work because it came out of the factory bent at a horrendous angle, and also trying not to throw up when I spotted that they'd cut the throttle stop too short, so they just welded a nut on the end to make it longer. But after blood, sweat, tears, and further disappointment with the world's second largest superpower, the Chinese mini jeep was ready for its final test drive. So we're gonna go for a quick test drive. Mate has got his buggy. I suppose actually, if you can just do the honours, sir, you can at least film how. Because they don't have a reverse gear anymore. Yeah. But there is one advantage. There we are, so kind of a reverse gear. <laughs> Yeah, when it's running, it's safe to say it's faster. A lot faster. And it now gets airborne over the train tracks. I can now power slide it one-handed and use opposite lock to correct the slide. brakes work well enough that you can effortlessly stop to pick up the chain tensioner that broke in half almost immediately. It's, 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 it's all crap. But apart from that, I now had a much faster mini jeep to tackle the mammoth challenge ahead of me. And with its four speed gearbox, five speed, six speed gearbox, it would be much better for the long distances that I would have to travel. And much more fun to do jumps in. So mission complete. I got to show off my fancy new turn signals one last time, and Nate and I headed back to the workshop for a debrief. And I'm never going to do this justice, but thank you so much Nate and to Foxfab Laser and Machine. I couldn't have done this without you. And I know you won't accept payment, but I'll do what I can. But, uh, Nate, you've been awesome. Yeah. That's incredible. Glad I, could, glad I could help, just paint us in a good picture. Oh yeah, oh god yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and then some. And yeah, so. that rear rack is... Uh, perfection yeah i think i think that'll do you real good no no but honestly no thank you so much yeah not a problem absolute lifesaver good luck on it your was... trip send me some pictures while you're 
Yep, no, we'll do. Along the way. Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll see how we get on. Um, and there is, as far as I can tell, there is no way across the middle of the lake, is there? No. Do you have a map? Or just your phone? I've got my phone. I mean, I mean let's, let's bring up a map. I mean, I'm curious to see where you're, where you're going. I don't know. <laughs> Next job, have my newly fitted lights pass a safety inspection. Left, right, brake. Have headlights? Which, uh, yes. Got my safety certificates, I think. Something, something. Oh, right. Let's go and load up with all the camping gear and actually get moving. <laughs> So, the Jeep is almost ready to go. Got the box of tech, the tripod lives under there, the oranges live on the tech. That's my bag with all my clothes in. That's the tool bag, or the old fuck bag. And that's my camping gear. And then we're gonna have a fuel can there, that's a big one, and then a little mini fuel can under there that is actually a fuel can. Ah, yes. Now my rage has subsided, we can talk about this. Time to go and fill up the 10 litre fuel can. Time to take it off the Jeep. Time to remove the fuel cap? How How do you remove the fuel cap? I mean, pliers seem excessive. Is it? <laughs> is it? Is it? Yeah, I don't think this is an actual fuel can. Oh, hang on, hang on. Warning, do not store gasoline in this tank. This gas tank is for aesthetic purposes only. <laughs> Storing gasoline in this tank can cause combustion due to its volatility, which leads to serious injury or death. Do not remove the gas cap. No shit. As it is securely fastened and is not meant to be taken off. <laughs> Have you even written 10 litres on it? Um, <laughs> do you want a fake fuel cap? <laughs> Well, answers that fucking question, doesn't it? We'll buy a fuel can later. For now, it's time to finish the build. Yes! There we are. As we're at peak Chinese now. Oh, yeah. So, uh, should protect the gooch. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, this is not genuine leather, surprisingly, and that will be very, very sweaty. I think we're ready. I think I've got about 150 miles now until the next fuel station. Go on then, now it's time to see how much fuel I've got left. <laughs> I'm fucked. I asked one of the uh, guys just about like the road up ahead and he said I might need to speak to somebody about some unexploded ordnance. Yeah, you shouldn't be here. 